Yes, let's talk about some absolute donuts who ruin their career in seconds. The British version. Uncle Proper brings you a bunch of wallies who cocked it all up as soon as they hit the mainstream. Strap in. I walk this earth like a god. Usman Ahmed. Now what better way to start than with the legendary Usman Ahmed. Now you may not have heard of the Uzmeister until today, but I guarantee you won't forget him after this. Uzi had to make some very big decisions in his life. Does he become a dancer or does he become a boxer? After giving it some serious consideration, he thought, ah, fuck it, let's combine the two. I'll cut some naughty shapes on my way to the ring and then show the world some sweet Uzi science. This is how you do it. Matched against the upcoming protege, Ashley Sexton, who was signed with Mr. Frank Maloney. Hashtag now Kelly Maloney. Frank knew Sexton was tipped for big things, so he must have thought this will be a laugh. The Usmeister had a dramatic career of eight wins, nine losses and two draws. However, he could have beaten Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder and Muhammad Ali all in one night and he'd still only be remembered for making a complete and utter twonk of himself here. You don't reckon he was influenced by Prince Nassim at all, do you? Nah, I can't see it myself. When you've got this sort of bravado, the one thing you've got to be able to do is back it up. And this was never a problem for Uzi. Just look at this movement. Look at those slips and slides. The man is completely elusive. The second coming of Mayweather and... Ah. Uh, hold on. Maybe this was just another one of his dance moves. Lean back. Lean back. Lean back. Uh, yeah, no, sorry it wasn't. The boxing world all have differing opinions on why Uzi lost this fight. Some say there were issues in camp, some say he just had an off night. But if I had to guess, I reckon it was because by the time he got to the ring he was absolutely fucking knackered. Big up the Uzmeister. O'Hara Davies. Ah yes, now the controversial O'Hara Davies. OD basically modelled himself on Floyd Mayweather and like Floyd, he worked out that the more he acted like a great big tit, the more people would watch him. Now of course, there's no harm in this. However, if you are going to do it, you've got to be able to back it up. Which, as it turned out, uh, he couldn't. However, I do give him props that he was a bit better than Uzi. Bosh! After rubbing up everybody the wrong way on Twitter just to get a fight, O'Hara took his unbeaten record to face the young prodigy of the time, Josh Taylor. A spicy build-up ensued before the pair went to war in the ring. The levels and class of Taylor was apparent and a knockdown in the seventh round left O'Hara thinking, uh, yeah, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. However, he rose to his feet, but when Taylor stepped on the pedal, Davy suddenly thought, nah, fuck this, I'm out of here, bruv. I'll smell you later, earning himself the dreaded reputation as a quitter. After the fight, much to his credit, though, he was very humble in defeat. First loss, mate, a tough loss to take. How are you feeling at the moment? That might be a stupid a question. A tough loss to take? What's tough is you having to do your job, coming to speak to people. I've got, I'm, I've got six figures in my back now. My job ain't tough. Uh, yeah. The O'Hara story did happen to get even worse from here when one of his usual Twitter spats ended with a joke that managed to upset an entire city. In an argument online with Tommy Coyle, he referenced the Liverpool tragedy of 1989 and the newspaper that wrongly claimed several insensitivities against the people of Merseyside. The post caused an outrage amongst the Scouse people and fighters such as Tony Bellew, which wasn't a surprise because he's quite opinionated. O'Hara was removed from Matchroom and also lost his training team and management in the Sims family. He's been picking up the pieces ever since. But on top of all this, Uncle Proper met him once when he was up and coming and gave him some lovely words of encouragement. But in return, he was pretty rude and all in all a bit of a melt. So I may have reconsidered his mention in this video if he had given me the time of day, but he didn't. So he's on the fucking list. Bosh. Cash Ali. And now for the big finale. The king of boxers who made an absolute div of themselves on TV and also made every promoter in the world never want to work with you again. The epic Cash, Dracula, Ali. Cashy Boy was a relatively unknown prospect with an unbeaten record, who finally got his opportunity away from the small hall to the mainstream facing the mighty David Price. He was never short of mouth in the build-up and the stage looked to be set for a very interesting fight. Was it a pad record or was he the real deal? Was he a new heavyweight prodigy or was he shades of Uzi? When the bell rang it turned out that he was pretty much as toilet as the Uzmeister. But when things are not going to plan for you in the ring there's only one thing to do. Pull out the fucking piranha card. Let's have a munch on that. 
prior to see the Vampire Slayer, didn't know what was bloody going on. Now in the build-up, Cash actually said in an interview that he was a replica of Mike Tyson. He's having a friggin' laugh, ain't he? But Cashy, me old son, if you are going to replicate one of the most ferocious boxers ever, probably best to replicate the things such as the movement, the snapping jab, and the incredible punching technique, and not the part of biting off a piece of another man's fucking head. Cashmaster was disqualified and received a six month ban with a £10,000 fine. He has returned to the ring but is unlikely to be seen on a matchroom show anytime soon. He's welcoming all heavyweight opponents for his next bout so feel free to get in touch with him if you think you're up to it. But maybe make sure he's had his fucking dinner before you fight him. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe you absolute mothers. Bosh!